All right, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Duty's Daggers. My name is Kevin, and we have an unboxing today. Um, I'm excited, as always. Please subscribe to the channel. Look down below. Make sure you are subscribed uh, if you're not sure. And uh, follow me on Instagram, Duty's underscore Daggers. So this is something a little, a little, uh, it's, it's not like super out of this world crazy, but I don't know. It's something a little more cool, wild, kind of, I don't know angular futuristic kind of looking thing you'll see in a second here um i've kind of been wanting to add some more visually stimulating knives into the collection if that makes sense um kind of some more off the wall kind of i don't know just not your run-of-the-mill great cutters if you know what i mean I, I love i love my good cutters um, but, you know, I'm a knife collector. I, I like to collect all kinds of stuff. So this is something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more on the wild side. Let me let Floki out of the room here. There should be a game where you guess to see how many seconds, <laughs> uh, before I have to go let Floki out for, uh, it happens pretty much every video. He lays down on the bed and he's chill when I start uh, recording, and then as soon as I push record, he gets up and starts whining and wants to get out. There we go, baby. It's a Tucson. It's been a little while since I've bought a Tucson. Um, mostly because, uh, you know, there's so many. Um, a lot of the ones I kind of have my eye on are usually sold out. Um, I will go through all of them at uh, White Mountain Knives occasionally. Uh, just to kind of see if there's any new ones on there. And I was doing that recently and saw this one. It immediately caught my eye. It is the Tucson TS377 in D2. And uh, it looked really neat. I told uh, Diener about it. He saw it and uh, thought it looked neat too and bought one as well. So let's see if, it, uh, let's see if it's as cool as I think it's going to be. Get ready for the oil. These are always really heavily oiled up. Oh, wow. <laughs> Damn. It's a little bigger than I thought it was going to be. Hell yeah. All right, let me put this away. We'll wipe our oil off here. Let's get the, uh, let's get the old rag out. This is cool looking, man. I'm hoping the action's good. Sometimes with Tucson, it's a little bit of a gamble. Sometimes, unless it's like an established knife that you've heard people talk about and you know it's good. This is one I haven't seen anyone talk about. Um, you know, Tucson has a lot of really crazy cool stuff. So uh, let's take a look at it here. Full titanium construction. It's not a frame lock, however. It is an inset liner lock, which I think is a really cool uh, detail. Something that's kind of... Not super common with uh, two sons. Uh, they have a lot of frame locks. Uh, and that was one reason I wanted to pick it up. Uh, another one is I just really like the aesthetic. This is a nice carbon fiber inlay. It's not a laminate. This is good quality. It looks like to be a good quality, thick piece of carbon fiber. Um, you can see it's coming up uh, over the surface of the titanium quite a bit, actually. And that might actually provide um, a little bit of kind of contoured feeling uh, in your hand. We'll see. I like the clip a lot. I like the uh, the kind of labeled pivot, but it's not the huge pivot that they use sometimes. It's the smaller one, which I like. Um, yeah, kind of angular, a little futuristic looking. Big old long titanium backspacer too. Um, let's check out the blade. We got a front flipper and a deployment hole. It's a little small. The deployment hole is a little small. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, that's a strong detent. Oh boy. <laughs> Woo, look at that blade, baby. Let me wipe the blade off. Oh man, that looks good. I saw like this this belt satin looking finish uh, in the pictures, and I'm so glad that it, it actually looks like that. Look at that. Damn, that looks good. 
Oh, man, that is a wicked Tonto, dude. I love a good belt satin where you see the lines and it's just, it, the, the lines are very fine and small, but they're visible. It looks so good. Wow. Nice big swedge. I love where these all, all these lines come together. Gosh, that is really nice. Yep, just was uh, just as I thought. This fills out your hand super nice. It is pretty thick. Pretty thick handle overall. Kind of like a kind of a loosey goosey choke up area here. We have like this kind of uh, little notch right here, so you can kind of choke it all the way back here, or you can scoot up a little bit too. Just um, pretty freaking comfortable no matter where your your hand is don't feel the clip this is a jerry jelly design cool yeah this is freaking wicked dude perfectly centered yeah that oh, there we go yeah it's hard to get in that that hole if the detent was lighter, I could do it, but I'm just not able to uh, to kick it out. That's okay. The front flipper works good. Yeah, really good. <laughs> this is cool, man. So this was a hundred bucks, um, kind of right around the range of most two suns in D2 or 14C. They're almost all right around a hundred bucks. Um, great sharpening choil, really nice. Thin behind the edge. Um, it's thick blade stock on the thick side for sure. Um, I don't know how this is going to cut. We'll probably end up doing a cut test with it, so we'll see. But the measurement behind the edge is definitely thin. And that's pretty thin up here too. You know, some tantos, a lot of tantos are kind of Thinner back here, and then up here, they're quite a bit thicker. This one feels thicker, but not like, not as thicker, not as much, th <laughs> not as, not as thicker as I have seen some Tantos. <laughs> it feels a little stiff on the drop. I'll probably take this apart and clean it. Um, I know. A, a, a few two suns I've owned, uh, well, actually just one, the 376. Uh, when I first got it, it felt just like this, like a little, a little gritty in the pivot. All I did was take it apart and clean it out, and then it was absolutely drop shut. So I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll do the same with this one. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not like as smooth as my other two suns. I have a feeling though, I just clean it out and it'll be perfect. The access to the liner lock isn't great. You can see if you look down from the top, there's really no cutout on this scale um, to get in there. But it is a wide enough area, and they did chamfer that edge right there to give you a little more access. And they chamfered the actual lock bar itself. So it's not really a, a problem. I don't feel like I'm struggling to disengage it, but it's definitely a little bit tight access in there. Is that a titanium liner or is that a steel? Steel. It's a steel liner. Steel hardware. Yeah, this is pretty freaking sweet, dude. This is a great addition to my two sun collection. Let's get out my other two suns real quick. Slowly building up the Tucson collection. They're such a fun knife brand to collect because their designs are just so so different, um, knife to knife. It's you know, uh, there's a lot of different designers that that design their knives. It's not just one guy, which you know has something to do with it, obviously. Um, but they just kind of they tend to gravitate to more out of the box designs in general which I really love, you know? 
I love my straightforward knives. I love my spider coves. I love, you know, all that stuff. But um, when you're looking for just kind of a wild, cool, crazy looking knife, Tucson is a really good place to look. Really good place. So the top here, the TS-376. This is the one I was talking about that was gritty when I first got it. Cleaned it, take it apart and cleaned it. And look at it now, like super drop shut. So I think, I think that's what I need to do. Uh, the TS-300, this one actually has skiffs in it. Super drop shut. The 370 or 269 hydraulically smooth. This has the best detent of all of them. And now the 377. The only liner lock of them all, the only front flipper of them all. Yeah, this is freaking cool, man. I really like this. What do you say we take it apart real quick? Let's take it apart real quick. Shouldn't take long. And uh, let's see if we can get this action super, super nice. Let's do it, why not? Get our little disassembly mat out here. Get our bits and driver. Looks like we got a T8 pivot. Yep, T8 pivot and T8 body screws. Very cool. Well, there's only one body screw, cool. One body screw right back here, which is cool. And then we got two inlay. I'm guessing those just hold the inlay in, probably. And then there might be one hidden behind the clip. I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, that's cool. The clip is actually inset into the carbon fiber. Check that out. That's cool. Man, they always surprise me with these little details. If you look at a Tucson real carefully, you start noticing really cool, I don't know, just cool little details that they they put in there. Okay, yeah, that was real easy to take apart. So the backspacer has a pin right here. Looks like two pins. Okay. I was wondering how the backspacer was held in there. There's just two pins that um, are, you know, in the two side of the scales and they go through the backspacer. So that holds it in there without having external hardware. That's cool. Oh, interesting. There's no liners. Wow. Look at that. So see these two pieces, see these two hardware? You can see the ends of them poking out here. This is the lock bar. It's just a piece that's held in here by these two screws it's uh that are hidden under the inlay wow how cool is that man i have never seen that before i have never seen that before ever that is cool internal stop pins too you can see the track that they uh they run on right there man that is cool i love shit like this Where'd that come out of? <laughs> oh, okay. That was the body screw right there. Okay. Gosh, that's cool. All right. Let's, um, let's take the bearing out. I might get skiffs for this. Um, Tucson uses these plastic bearings, which are okay in a lot of them. Um, but uh, I have noticed that if skiff does make replacements, for the knife, actually, I have that little uh, gauge. I can I can figure out what size it is. I might do that, unless we unless this really improves the action right now by cleaning it. We'll see. It very well, could. Okay, there's that one. We got a D-shaped pivot too. Great. That is great. I like to run the bearing just kind of in my fingers through the cloth like this. Get any like little little grits and grimes that might be in there. Let's get our tough glide. We'll put some drops on the track right here. 
Just a couple little drops. Put the bearing back on. Now let's hit this side. So cool, dude. I've, I've never seen a lock bar done like that. Usually it's a full liner, you know? Even if it's an inset liner lock, um, usually it's full liners in here. How cool. Okay, that's good. Now let's get the tang in here. I took apart for the first time my um, Sharp by Design Mini Tempest the other day to put in some skips, which I should have done a long time ago. It really, really improved the action quite a bit. Um, but one thing I noticed taking apart the knife, and I had never taken apart a Brian Nadeau design before. You just don't have to because they're, they're always perfect and they stay perfect. Um, but I took this one apart to put it some, in some new bearings. And you could tell the, the fit on all the pieces were so tight and just perfect. There was one pin holding, up, holding, holding everything back here. And it was held together by one long screw that went through the clip and through the body and through both sides of the scales. One screw for the clip and to hold everything and then the pivot. That is it. There is a long pin also um, that you, is invisible from the outside, but it's in there. And when you're setting down the, neck, the second scale onto you know, the bottom one, the fit between that pin and the pivot is just absolutely perfection. Almost kind of hard to get them to set down because you have to make sure that you're setting it down perfectly evenly, right? Um, just really impressive stuff. All right, let's put some drops right in here. Let's roll this bearing through the fingies. I'm not noticing like a bunch of grime or anything coming out of here. But that was the same for this other night, the other, this other two sun. I didn't notice any any visible grit any, or anything coming out, but once I put it back together, it was noticeably smoother. So, all right, let's put some drops right in here. Actually, you know what? Probably should. I think this backspacer should be installed on this one. Like that. Okay, put our bearing. And we can set our scale on. Like that. Nice and easy. Come on, be smooth, be smooth. And then we put our post in. When did the post go in? I guess it doesn't matter. Oopsie daisy. I love it when knives have minimal hardware. It just it, it tells me that the designer really cared about that, you know. You can tell some designers are like, well, whatever. Who cares if they have to take out a bunch of screws? Yeah, it feels smoother. It's not really falling shut yet. But it, I don't I don't feel any grit in the pivot anymore. Man, that front flipper really fires it out. Um, what if I loosen up the pivot a little bit? Is it too tight? Maybe it was. No blade play right now. Okay, yeah. 
Much better. Oh yeah. Can I get the reverse flick? Come on. Yeah. Ah. Can't do it. All right, yeah, we're good. Zero blade play. Rock's freaking solid. And our action's looking real nice. And it'll break in. So overall, this is, a, I think, a really cool addition to the Tucson collection. Like I said, it was 200 bucks. Um, you know, it's a, a very nicely machined and designed knife inset liner really cool how they did it you saw it was connected uh, by some hardware it's not a full liner really great machining good quality carbon fiber awesome grind on the blade um just really pretty epic knife man for a hundred dollars in d2 all freaking day man all day and i like d2 <laughs> so that works out good for me oh man yeah sweet there you go guys um i'll, I'll uh, link it down below last i checked these were still in stock so i will link it down below hopefully by the time the video comes out they're still there um yeah that's about it i love you guys thanks for watching please like the video before you head out and i'll see you next time Adiós.